Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this quick recap of derivatives. So, we start by doing a quick introduction of what a derivative actually is. So, it's a security uh, or a financial contract whose value is derived from a separate underlying asset. Um, if you have a stock, for example, and you also have an option on the purchase of that stock, then the value of the option is drawn from the value of the stock in that case. Same with gold, same with any other type of commodity. There's a number of different basic kinds. We'll look at them in a little more detail in a while. Uh, the first one is a future and an option is also mentioned in here. And the key thing about these is that they're traded on org organized exchanges. While forwards and swaps are customized and usually done on an over-the-counter counter basis. And so the main use and the main reason we would consider the use of derivatives is uh, for hedging. Uh, in a risk reduction scenario, but they may also be used for speculation. So the ways that they can actually be used include to hedge your risk, so to try and reduce your risk when you invest in an asset, to reflect the view of the future direction of the market. So if you believe the market is going in a direction, it's an alternative to purchasing the asset itself, to lock in an arbitrage profit. So if you've made a profit already on purchasing something, and for example, but it's in another currency, you may lock that profit in by entering into arrangements at this point to change the nature of a liability and to change the nature of an investment without incurring the cost of selling one portfolio and buying another. So again, by purchasing some, other, some form of a uh, uh, derivative asset, we can change the nature of the portfolio we're working on. So the first type of derivative we're going to talk about is the forward contract. And so a forward is a private agreement between a buyer and a seller to trade in a specific quantity of an asset at a specified price and at a specified time. So in other words, we're going to buy a specific weight, for example, of gold. We're going to pay a price for it. So it could be, in the example I have here, $300 an ounce. And we're going to pay that amount in three months' time. So we will have, the, the, we will have a contract to actually do that in three months' time. So, as I mentioned, it's based on a contract. So, the contract can be either a, a call on the other, and so as well. And so, the price of a future for a particular contract is the price at which you agree to buy or sell that future. It's determined by the supply and demand on the floor of the exchange at the time um, there was a spot price, and a long position agrees to purchase the underlying asset at a stated future price, and short positions agree to deliver the underlying asset at a stated future price. And therefore, in futures, the profit um, uh, is made if you're on the long side, so you're on the purchase side, is if the spot price is higher than the forward price, then you'll make a profit. If you're on the short side or you're on the selling side, then you'll make the profit if the forward price is greater than the um, spot price. And so that's what ultimately happens. Ultimately, when you get to maturity, the forward price and the spot price will be the same. Um, forwards and futures are very similar. And the main difference being that it's a contract now, transact later type of arrangement. But... Uh, unlike forwards, futures are standardized, regulated, exchange traded, settled through a clearinghouse and post daily gains and losses. So there's a settlement and that's where things like a margin account come into play. The other major issue is that generally futures are traded um, through clearinghouses. So the person who takes the pos each side of the position, whether that's the long position or the short position, actually does their work via a clearinghouse rather than in engaging directly with the person, with the counterparty on the other side of the transaction itself. And so every day there's a settlement price at the end of the day. And so the contract is then marked to market. So in other words, what it's worth now. Um, if you make a profit on the day, then money is deposited into your margin account. If you make a loss on the day, then money is deducted from your margin account. Um, ultimately, depending on how much the particular um, adjustment is required to be, you could fall below what's referred to as the maintenance margin. And in that scenario, you'll have to, leave, have to add money back on again. And so as I mentioned, ultimately, the futures price and the spot price come together uh, over time. They could be higher or lower 
uh, beforehand. But as you move forward, you will find that you're in a scenario where they will ultimately come together, which makes sense. Okay, quick example here. You can see it moving through. And so we have a maintenance margin um, initially set at 75%. Um, we have uh, a value of a contract at $365 and there's 100 col uh, contracts in this example. So we have an amount. And that means the maintenance margin in this scenario, 1,500. And so if the price falls, then the margin account um, will drop from 2,000 um, to 1,700. And so the margin account is greater than the maintenance margin, so we won't have to add anything back on day two. But on day three, there's another fall. And at this stage, the margin account is at 1,400, which is below the maintenance margin. And therefore, we need to bring it back up to that $2,000 in this case. And so 600 euro or dollars needs to be placed into the account. And that the situation where that has to happen is often referred to as a margin call. Now in terms of differences, um, the primary differences between forwards and futures is that forwards are private, whereas usually futures are exchange traded. Forwards can be non-standard, so as long as the two sides of the contract agree what the terms are, then the terms of the contract can be anything. A future is a set specified contract. It has a lot of different types of terms and conditions, but they're set in advance and gr agreed between the parties. There's generally one specified delivery day, delay, date for a forward, whereas futures can have a range of delivery dates. Um, forwards are settled at maturity, so they can run on for many months. The mark to margin approach means the futures end up de facto being settled daily. And then the delivery of final uh, or final cash settlement usually occurs um, at delivery. Um, the contract is closed out prior to maturity on the future side, usually by buying an equivalent number of contracts on the opposite side of the transaction. Okay, so options. Options are slightly different to forwards and futures in that they are, as the name suggests, the option, but not the requirement to purchase or sell an asset in the future. And so different types of options um, exist including a call option which is the option to buy a certain asset by a certain date for a certain price which is referred to as the strike price and a put is an option to sell a certain asset by a certain date for a certain price and that's referred to as the strike price when comparing futures and options it's worth remembering again futures contracts tractors have the obligation to buy at a certain point in the future so the obligation remains and they ultimately have to be settled out. Whereas an option gives you the right uh, to buy, but you also have the right to decide not to buy. So the decision is your own in that type of situation. And there's a number of different types of options, call and puts options we've mentioned already. Um, the European option is an option that can only be exercised at the end of its life. An American option is one that can be exercised at any time. In terms of positions, you can be in a number of different positions in relation to options. So you can have a long call, um, and this is the most basic trading strategy where you buy a call option with the belief the price of the security will rise beyond the strike price before the, the um, option expiration date. The long put is another strategy in which the investor buys a put option with the belief that the price will go significantly below the strike price before the expiration date. Uh, a short call is where you sell a call option uh, which uh, and that gives a, creates a contract that gives the holder the right but not the obligation to buy a stock, bond, currency or commodity at a given price. If the investor thinks the price of the instrument will fall, he can sell the short underlying instrument as well as the corresponding call option. While owning the call is protection against the rise in the price of the underlying security, selling the call generates cash while creating potential unlimited risk on the other hand a short put is um, a bullish option strategy that involves selling a short or writing a put option where the stock rises above the strike price of the short put by expiration date the put option expires worthless and the entire premium from its sale is earned the seller of the short uh, put gets the premium and therefore because they're the seller they're betting the price will rise above the strike price and that they'll get to hold on to the premium 
The buyer of the short put pays the premium and bets the stock will lie below the strike price, price so they can sell the shares at the strike price and then um uh which is above the market price and then make a profit in that scenario. Um there's lots of different types of assets that can underline these um options. So it could be stock, it could be foreign con currencies, it could be stock indices, it could be futures. Um, so there's a whole range of, of potential scenarios. The number of different specifications that exist in relation to trade uh, traded options, including that they have an expiration date, that they have a strike price, that they'll either be European or American, or that they'll be a call or put option. The final one we're going to talk about is swaps. So with swap, a uh, swap is a financial scenario is if a party wants to hedge some risk or transfer form the nature of a cash flow. They go to a swap dealer or sometimes referred to as a swap bank, which creates a customized over the counter contract to meet the client's needs. The bank warehouses the swaps and, and that means they put them with lots of other uh, swaps and then use interest rate derivatives to hedge the residual risk exposure until it finds an offsetting swap. The huge market size in this area suggests that there's a massive demand for swaps, but the narrow spread between them would appear to suggest that there is a huge amount of competition in the market for these particular items. In terms of the interest rate swap, this is the simplest type of swap, um, sometimes referred to as the plain vanilla interest rate swap. You have two counterparties, A and B, who are agreeing on a notional principle which never actually changes hands but is used for calculations. I.e., they set an amount. It could be 10 million, it could be any amount. A agrees to make fixed semi annual payments to B, the size of which is determined by a known fixed interest rate on the notional price. So if it was that 10 million, it was 5%, that would mean that they would have to pay 500,000 um, as an interest rate there. On the other hand, B agrees to make a floating rate payment every six months, the size of which, again, will be based on the semi-annual floating interest rate at the time of the notional principle. So that might be something like a LIBOR rate plus a percentage. And so that will change from month to month. In this scenario, payments are made in the same currency um, and ultimately they're netted off against each other and the counterparty um, who owes at the end of any of those offsets is the person who has to pay over some money. So again, as I said, in this example, you could have a LIBOR type of situation where that's the variable rate. You could also have a fixed rate that goes uh, through and somebody ends up making a payment in the end. Contract to exchange a series of cash payments. A swap contract generally specifies an interest rate applicable to each cash payment, the currency of each cash payment, the payments timetable, the provisions to deal with the default and any other relevant issues. Um, the basic scenario side, it is where we want to buy at a particular price. On the sell side, it's where we want to sell at a particular price in the future, a particular asset. There's a number of specifications then that are actually what the asset itself is, um, what the contract size is, what the arrangements for delivery are, Prices quoted, daily price movement limits, and whatever the position limits might be.